Hey, today the first thing we're going over is the rank theorem, and it's a pretty straightforward idea, so let's jump right into it. Uh, we're in section 2.9, so you can pause the video and get everything ready that you need. Okay, so what are rank and nullity? Those are going to be important just definitionally to understand what we're doing. Well, the rank of the matrix is the, is the dimension of its column space. Okay, the dimension of its column space. And the nullity of a matrix is the dimension of the null space. Okay, so dimension of column space, that's the rank. Dimension of the null space, that's the nullity. And it turns out that the sum of the two equals the number of columns in the matrix. Okay, so the rank of matrix A plus its nullity equals the number of columns in A. And so if we have A, an M by N matrix, then rank plus nullity equals n. So that's all we're talking about. It's a pretty straightforward section, and the ideas are straightforward. And it turns out finding them is fairly, fairly straightforward. OK, so if we have this matrix A, what do we do? Well, if we've got to know the dimension of the column space, one way to find that out is the number of basic variables that will equal the number of linearly independent columns that um, span the column space or provide a basis for the column space. So then the number of pivots is equal to the number of basic variables. So that's how we find out. The rank is just equal to the number of pivots. So I row reduce to REF and find out the number of pivots. That's the number of basic variables. So that's the dimension of the column space. And then nullity. That's based on the number of free variables. OK, so I count the number of pivots. And then um, I'm actually using the theorem. I do n minus the number of pivots to figure out how many free variables there would be. All right. And so again, just row reduce to REF, RREF, and count the pivots and free variables, basic variables. OK, so so let's take a look at some examples. I'm going to jump in here to MATLAB. And this is in section, this is in the online notes. OK, so if you go into Rank Theorem, right, you can actually just copy right here and jump in and paste this in. OK, so we do, in fact, have the correct value for m. Right, you can see the negative 4, negative 12, negative 2. So the first column is correct. Uh, 372, the second column is correct. And you can double check that we have the correct matrix here for M. And now all we do is row reduce it. Okay, so look, how many pivots does it have? Well, there's one, there's two. Okay, so even though there's three rows, there's only two pivots, okay? So what does that mean for us? Well, it means that the column space um, has two linearly independent vectors that could be its basis, right? So it's a two-dimensional column space, All right? And so its rank is two. And and then what's the number of free variables? So let me let me back up with the ink. Sorry about that. And well. This column is going to have a free variable, and this column is going to have a free variable. So its rank and its nullity are both 2. And notice that 2 plus 2 is 4, which is the total number of columns that I have. That's I have an, a 3 by 4 matrix, right? So n is 4, and the rank is 2, the nullity is 2. So the theorem works out. So let's check out these other examples and and see what we've got. OK, so we can enter all of these. And I've got remember, when you put the semicolon, it suppresses the output. So even though I've done run section um, and it doesn't look like anything has happened, um, things have definitely happened. All right. So so let's row reduce a. OK, and notice that it has one, two, three, four rows. OK, so when we row reduce it, we get three pivots. So three basic variables, its column space is three because a 
three three basis vectors, three linearly independent basis vectors will span the set. So it's a three dimensional column space. And we have the last column corresponds to a free variable. So we have a one dimensional nullity. All right, so the rank is three, the nullity is one and three plus one is four. So again, the theorem seems to be working out just fine. All right, what about B? Well, let's row reduce B. And this is interesting because again, we have two pivots and these two columns will be free variables. So we have two basic variables and two free variables. So our column space has dimension two, our nullity has dimension two, and n is four, the number of columns that we have in this matrix. Cool, so the last one, again, we get REF, um, RREF form for D. And so this one takes a little more looking at, it's a little more complex matrix, but first of all, we have three, linearly independent vectors that span the column space. So the column space is three dimensional. We have two vectors that will correspond to free variables. And three plus two is equal to five, which is in fact the number of columns that we have in our matrix. Okay, so that's all the, the rank theorem says. So hopefully these questions about rank and nullity um, will just be easy points, free points on the midterm.